grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, brethren, we shall be reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the book of the prophet Isaiah and chapter 5. I will read from verse, from verse 1 through to verse 7. Now let me sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved regarding his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. He dug it up and cleared out its stones and planted it with the choicest vines. He built a tower in, it, in its midst and also made a wine press in it. So he expected it to bring forth good grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge please between me and my vineyard. What more could have been done to my vineyard, but I have not done it? Why then, when I expected it to bring forth good grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? And now, please let me tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge, and it shall be burned, and break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will lay it waste, it shall not be pruned or dug. But there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds, that they rain, no rain on it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant plant. He looked for justice, but behold, oppression. For righteousness, but behold, a cry for help. Amen. We thank the Lord for his word. Isaiah is a prophet of God. He is, he was in the presence of the Lord and the Holy Spirit used to visit him and give him word for the Lord's people, Israel. In this beautiful chapter, brothers and sisters, these verses that we've just read show exactly what the Lord has done for his church and individually for each and every one of us. The word of God speaks of a vineyard and we read definitely that it is for the people of Israel as the word of God says and also we know that the men of Judah are his pleasant land. In the New Testament brothers and sisters we are the people of God. We are the spiritual Israel. We are the people that the Lord invited to be not only his people, but his children. The Lord's grace provided for me and for you to be called sons and daughters of the Lord the Almighty. As a good father, he did everything. The first thing that he couldn't stand in us, he removed it from ourselves. He couldn't see the sin staying in us. And what he did, the most valuable thing he had, his beloved son, Jesus Christ, he sent him on the earth. Jesus Christ accepted to receive a form of man, to be flesh and blood. He lived among people not as a king, but as a humble teacher, rabbi. He had no possessions. He had nothing. He showed the example he showed to everyone how they must live. He taught 
everything that he received from his father. He executed the will of God perfectly. He didn't deviate at all. He never thought that he was God and yet he could do whatever he wanted. Never. He expressed and showed that he was in weakness in the night before he was surrendered to die on the cross. He went before his father and he prayed. And the word of God said that the sweat was coming out of his skin as blood because of his stress and his agony. And the Lord, through all this beautiful plan, this amazing plan that we can read, the Word of God wants us to live it, not to read it. Our relationship and our connection with the Word of God, brothers and sisters, it's not a connection that a person has with their books. The connection that a Christian must have with the Word of God is a connection of life. And this life came through blood, through the blood of Jesus Christ. And the Word of God gives us the opportunity to live what is written in this book. We can live what we read, that the perfect love casts out fear. You, me, we can live it. We can live that the Holy Spirit was sent to me and to you in order to be able to finish our race on this earth. We can live it. But in order to live and to have this permanent and constant experience in our lives, we need to deny ourselves. You know, Jesus Christ never said, I'm living for myself. When someone asked him and said, Master, I want to follow you, he said to him, you know, even the animals, the foxes, the birds have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to place his head. And he was absolutely true what he said, even from the night that he was born. There was even no bed. You know, when nowadays, when our wife's giving birth, the nurse is bringing the baby in a beautiful bed, covered beautifully, an amazing hospital. Everything is perfect. Sometimes we, we are fortunate enough in this country that we can enjoy everything that this country can provide. But when Jesus was born, brethren, he was born in a barn. He was placed in a manger among animals. And the first visitors were not his family. The first visitors were the shepherds from the mountains who saw the angels coming up and down and singing to the Lord glory in the highest. Because glory, brothers and sisters, does not come from riches of this earth, but glory comes from the riches of heaven where the angels live when all these creatures that glorify the name of Jesus Christ day and night that's where glory comes from and the word of God today wants us to see what the Lord has done and then the word of God comes back to us and I will say not to us, I would say to me. And every one of you can say the same for yourselves. 
And the question is, what the Lord asked, what more could have been done to my vineyard? And the question is to me and to you, what more could have been done? He created a vineyard and we will go in detail to see what God had created. He created a vineyard not in a random place, but he chose a very fruitful hill. He didn't buy a place in a valley or in a random place. He found the best place to plant his vineyard. In the very fruitful hill, he dug it up. He cleared out its stones and planted it with the choicest vine. Because his people, brothers and sisters, you and me, are the choicest plants. You are the choicest plant of God. Do we understand how valuable we are in the eyes of the Lord? Do we understand how the Lord sees us every morning? He doesn't see a 50-year-old man losing his hair, gaining some weight, and having blood tests to see where his cholesterol level, levels are. He sees a heart. He sees a soul. He sees someone who is going to be an eternal inhabitant of the kingdom of heaven. That's what he sees. He doesn't look at the race. He doesn't look at the color. He doesn't look at the height, at the beauty, at nothing. He looks at permanent inhabitants of the kingdom of heaven. That's why even on this earth, he has created all the circumstances and situations and conditions for these people to live. Fruitful hills. Clean earth. He built a tower in its midst. Do you know why the tower is there? For protection. Towers are built for protection. Refuge, shelter, coverage. And this, brothers and sisters, this tower in the midst of the vineyard is Jesus Christ. And his blood flows every moment for everyone who wants to be cleansed and washed with it. He created everything perfectly. There was nothing more to be done. And this is, brothers and sisters, first for myself, because the word of God first comes to me, and then to you. The word of God, brothers and sisters, wants today to test our prayers. If we are sufficient with what the Lord has given us, if we thank him every single day for the constant protection he provides to each and every one of us, our souls are protected at all times. There is a huge battle around us every moment. With the spirits, the unclean spirits that reign on this earth. But we are covered every single day as long as we are washed with the blood of Jesus Christ. You have your protection. Yes, sometimes we may be sick. Sometimes we may not have strength. 
Sometimes we may feel lonely. Sometimes we may go to our knees and we say, Lord, I'm alone. I have no one. Sometimes we may go to our knees and say, Lord, can't you see that I'm sick? What do you think? He can't. He can see everything. He created you. You are the work of his hands. You know, we, people, brothers and sisters, are the only one thing that the Lord created with his hands, not with his word. We are his creation. And he gave us his breath. He gave us his spirit. And he gave everything to us together along with our faith so that we will be able to endure until the end. So actually, brothers and sisters, what it is important today to see is just to make a self-assessment me for myself, you for yourselves. Where we are at. What our expectations from the Lord are. What do I expect? You know, many times I hear, and I used to say myself a lot, but the Lord wants me to be healthy. But the, the Lord wants me to be joyful. But the Lord wants me this, wants me that. And we make ourselves equal to God by saying what the Lord wants and what the Lord doesn't want. And then there is a contradiction with our prayer when we say, Lord, do according to your will, which is the best prayer. But then we have, before that, expressed what the will of God is. Because that's what we want. But the Lord comes and he says, My will is not your will. And my ways are not your ways. So let's, brothers and sisters, from today, stop saying what the Lord wants and what the Lord doesn't want. The only thing that we know that the Lord wants is for everyone to be saved. That's the only one thing that we definitely know because it is written. For the rest, the only thing we must do is to pray for his will to be done. Lord, if you want, if you want, please do that. If you don't want to, don't do it. Am I ready to pray like that? Because now, this prayer, brothers and sisters, has to destroy whatever I want. Has to show a denial for my will. Has to show a perfect denial for myself. I have to minimize myself for the Lord to grow and be profound in my life. Because from now on, we will only live for the Lord. We will only live day by day. We will only live by faith. And then we will show to God that Lord, yes indeed, I will be sufficient to your vineyard. I will be sufficient to the tower that you have placed in the midst of your vineyard. I will be sufficient and happy because you have placed me and planted me in the most fruitful hill. And that way, brother and sister, you will be able to bring to the Lord what he expects. And what he expects from me and from you is to bring to him good.
grapes. You know, our fruits, we can actually see on a daily basis. I know what my fruits are. I know what I produce every day. When I go before go to bed, I can see back on my day to see and to check what I have done for him who loved me. What I offered him. And you know, it is not good enough to say, I will live for the Sunday. No. Every day, brothers and sisters, 24-7, we live for the Lord. When we are working, we live for the Lord. When we are at home, we live for the Lord. If you're going to check your fruit, there is a very simple thing to do. Check your mobile phone. Check your applications. Check your history in your web browser. And you will see your fruit. Check the situation and the condition of yourself. Go in front of the mirror. See yourself. And think what the Lord would have thought for yourself and me for myself. How do I stand when I go on my knees and I say, the Lord wants me to be healthy? This is only for myself. There is nothing there for the Lord. When I pray, what am I praying for? Do I pray for my brothers and for my sisters? Many of, many of my brothers came to me and they said their problems. How much do I pray? How much do I pray? You know, brethren, at least for myself, I always feel guilty. Guilty. And this is a confession to you all. Because I feel that I never do enough for the Lord and for my brothers and my sisters. And I want from the Lord from this day everything to be changed. Whatever was in the past, I want it to stay there and stop following me anymore. I want from this day a new life for me, for my family for our church, for you all, a new life. A life that will be only happy and joyful in the execution of the will of God for me. And you know something? We know the will of God, brethren. We know the will of God very, very well. Because sometimes we pray, Lord, show me your will. You know it. There is nothing, nothing, nothing else to be shown to you. Because when we go on our knees and we pray, show me your will, Lord, we mean for a mission, we mean for something amazing like the days of the apostles. But think of the days of the apostles. Think of the days of the apostles. They never asked nothing for themselves. Nothing. But because they were faithful, the Lord trusted them. And he gave them the Holy Spirit in such strength and power so that they could move mountains. Not because they asked for it, but because the Lord found them to be faithful and trustworthy. And the Lord said, yes, these are the people that I am going to place my spirit on. Spirit on. These are the people that they have decided not to live for themselves, but to actually do whatever I'm giving them to do. Do we have the flame in our hearts? The flame in our hearts for all these things that we read to be fulfilled nowadays. 
Do I have this desire in my heart to actually open the, day, the, the, the door of the church and come in and feel the presence of the Lord to be strong before we go to our knees? Why? Because there is a background to each and every one of us. And before we come to the church, we are already filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm not coming to the church expecting the Lord to bless me in the 15 minutes, 20 minutes, one hour. We will go on our knees. This is not enough. This is not enough, brothers and sisters. I need more time with him. Apostle Peter, he was praying all the time. Apostle Paul, he wanted to do things for the Lord, but he always trusted the Holy Spirit. Lord, can I go to Derby? Can I go to Lystra? No, stop. But why? I want to do your will. Stop. The Holy Spirit stopped him. And while he was sleeping, he saw a man from Macedonia calling him, Paul, come and help us. So he understood, but he had to go to Greece. How do I do my everyday life? How much do I trust to the voice of my Lord every day? Maybe I will start a step back. Do I hear the voice of the Lord every day? Because for something to be trusted, I need to know it first. How often do I seek the voice of God? I want to do things in my life. I pray once, I pray twice, I pray three times. I, have, I hear no voice and then I do whatever I think. No, stop. Do nothing. Wait until the Lord comes because he will come. But he wants to try us sometimes, brothers and sisters, to see how faithful we are. How much do we trust ourselves? And how much do we trust Him? Because with our mouth and our lips we can say so many words. I know the Lord can do this. I know the Lord can do that. But in reality, we don't believe it. What more could have been done to my vineyard but I have not done it? Brothers and sisters, the Word of God today wants to make certain in our hearts that everything that could have been done for me and for you, it is done. There is a beautiful story that Jesus said to his disciples, and if you want to turn with me in the Gospel according to Matthew, the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 22. And Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven, verse 2, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding and they were not willing to come. What else did they need to go to the wedding? They needed only one thing. If you are going to attend the wedding, you need one thing. An invite. Someone to come and hand you an invitation that says, it will be a pleasure for me and my family for you to attend my son's wedding. What else could have been done? What else? Some people say, oh, I would love the Lord to come and grab me and bite me and do things for me and do things with me. He will never do it because the Lord will never possess you. The Lord will do whatever is needed for you to attend his son's wedding. And although all these people in their hands had the invitations from the Lord, from the king, 
they were not willing to come. Why? They went to the first one. Come, because everything is ready. See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen, my fatted cattle are killed. And all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But listen what verse 5 says. But they made light of it. And they went their ways. One to his own farm, another to his business. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. So you see, brethren, many times we do not appreciate what the Lord has done. Do you know why? Because we see things on this world to be more valuable than the work of God. We see the examples and the models of this world and we say, oh, I want to be like him. And if I will be like him, I will have everyone adoring me. Really? <laughs> That's what you want? If I have the same appearance as the actors, the singers, the models, the motivational speakers, fantastic. I will make this the purpose of my life. Really? And where does the invite of God go in your life? And that's how we, may, we make light of the invitation that God has given us for the eternal life. Because definitely, eternal life cannot be found in social media. Eternal life will never be found in the beautiful square we have as a big window always open in our houses. The kingdom of God will never be found when we see beautiful men and women in this world. And the kingdom of God definitely will not come for those who do not wait for it. I will say it once more. The kingdom of God will never come to those who are not expected to come. The kingdom of God will come to those who live for it. Apostle Paul said, may the Lord help me found, I think it's in Timothy. Yes. Apostle Paul said to Timothy, Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And now listen to that. Very carefully, brothers and sisters. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Do you know what love means? When you love someone, you do everything for them to look at you and to come to you and to hug you. When you love someone, you will do everything in your powers to make them happy so that they can be with you. So we know that the appearing of the Lord is coming. What are we doing for this coming of the Lord? Have we loved it? Or we take light of this invitation again? Apostle Paul didn't say that this, that we read, that the crown of righteousness will come to those, of course, who loved, who have loved his appearing and also to some others who are actually love this world, like Demas who went in Thessalonica, there will be some exemptions. No exemptions. 
No exemptions, brethren. Exempted from the wrath of God will be those who are faithful to His Son, Jesus Christ. Because that was His ultimate plan to save humanity. If you love His Son and you do everything in your powers to have Him always next to you, no matter what, I know from my heart that the Lord is changing something today. The question is, will this change last? Or will this change be lost? It's up to me to keep my invitation and have it always in the first place of my heart waiting because I know it's the only invitation that has no date and time <laughs> we know that because this is only planned from the God the Almighty the question is brothers and sisters where have I placed this invitation in my heart is it bottom or it's the first thing in my life from today onwards, brothers and sisters, before you decide something, think of your invitation. You can decide many things every day. You can take multiple decisions every day. Multiple decisions. The question is, will our decisions affect the invitation that was given to us when we were saved? The expression, once saved, always saved, is not according to the word of God. Only if I'm working with my salvation. Only if I take the salvation that I received from the Lord and I'm working with it. Every single day of my life. Before I go to my mobile phone, to my laptop, to check something in the internet, think twice. And if you feel that what you are going to do is going to hinder you from accessing the invitation, stop where you are. Stop where you are. If you think that there are things in your house that actually directing you to places where you don't want to be, get rid of them. The Word of God says, if your hand offends you, cut it off. If your eye offends you, take it out. If you have things in your life that actually hinders you from reaching the kingdom of heaven, take them away. It's better if you lose something from this earth but gaining the kingdom of heaven rather than when the Lord comes. He will say, Lord, what could I have done? There will not be any excuses at that day. No excuses. Because what more could have been done to my vineyard that I have not done it? And what will I be able to say to the Lord as a response? What? But Lord, I asked you for a car. Really? But Lord, I ask you for this. But Lord, I ask you for another job. But Lord, I ask you for this. But Lord, I ask you for that. And the question of the Lord will always stand. What could have been done to my finger that I have not done in it? Everything you need to be saved, brother and sister, you have it already. Everything else is a luxury from our Father because He loves us. And sometimes I feel that we are spoiled from the Lord, by the Lord. Because more, He gives us more than we need. More than we actually need. May these things that we get not make us 
lose the kingdom of heaven. But if we receive whatever the Lord gives to us for his kingdom, hallelujah. That's the blessing. Use whatever you have, brother and sister. Whatever you have, use it and share it with everyone so that everyone will be blessed by what you have from the Lord. Everything you need to be saved, you already have it. And this is said by God the Father so that we will have no excuse. We have plenty of love so that we can show to others. Plenty. Plenty. We have received, each and every one of us, a talent from the Lord. Let us all use it for his kingdom. Let us all use it for his glory. Let us all use it for his vineyard. If you see a vine that is weak, pray for them. Pray for them, for the Lord to take care of it more and more. Yes, he sees. The Lord sees everything. But always he sees in our hearts whether we care for one another. In any way you can think. Any way. In any way you can think. So that the Lord will bless his house, will bless his vineyard, and that we will be able, brothers and sisters, to bring forth good grapes, not for us, for him. I don't want to be fruitful for myself. I want to be fruitful for himself. I want to be minimized so that he will be glorious among us. May the Lord, brothers and sisters, bless us all. May this day be a day of change. May we all change the way we pray. May we all change the way we seek the Lord. May we all be sufficient to what the Lord gave to us. Now when every one of us go back to their houses, have a look around, think, Pray, go to your knees and ask the Lord, saying, Lord, do you see something that hinders your presence to come? And if you can, you can get rid of it. If you can't, because there are others with you, pray for the Lord to give you the strength to be away from these places. And ask him, to give you the wisdom to speak to others the way he wants. Because brothers and sisters, it's not, for example, if I have members in my family that are not saved, I will never go with wrath or with a way that I will be bad to them. But the first thing we have to show to others is our love. Our love our compassion, our prayers. And the man of God, you have to know, and I have to know, that it's not a man who is marginalized, no. The man of God is a man who lives among people on this earth, but nothing can touch him. The man of God, I will say it, is untouchable. Do you know why? Because he is protected. Do you know why? Because the Lord has placed a hedge around them. And no one is ever able to penetrate that hedge that the Lord has established. Because he is God. Because he is almighty. And because he loves his children. May the Lord bless us all. May the Lord make us a church that every one of us will seek the presence of God. May that he makes us a church 
but each and every one of us be transformed with the word of God and with the, by renewing our minds. Every day. Every day. Renew your mind. Do you know why the Lord wants us to, to always keep renewing our minds? Because if, if we don't do that, any new thoughts, any temptations, they will be able to penetrate our hearts and our minds. But if we keep renewing our minds, nothing will be able to touch us and take us away from the kingdom of heaven. May the Lord bless us all, brothers and sisters. I pray for our families to be safe. I pray for our loved ones to be saved. And I pray for ourselves to be changed. In Jesus' name, amen.